have gifted you with many gifts, uh, you know, the acceptance uh, uh, by people and the fact that you can memorize uh, hadith and uh, Quran uh, verses. Uh, what I actually was astonished while preparing for this episode, some of uh, your lectures were attended by one million people. One million people were sitting uh, and listening to you uh, directly. How can you control one million people who attend the lecture? And I believe that's not happening. Happening uh, so often in the world, well, you know, having one million people uh, watching is and s attending a lecture for a person. It may happen uh, throughout TV uh, screens, but this is uh, doesn't happen. It doesn't happen that often. What do you say about that? This is only because of the grace of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. If you know my background in childhood, I was a stammerer. If you would ask me what is your name, I would say my name is Zah 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 Zakir. I was a stammerer. And while I was studying, when I was doing my medical studies, I could not have dreamt of speaking in front of 25 people. In your dreams, you can dream anything. I could have dreamt of becoming the best doctor in the world, the best surgeon in the world, but I could not have dreamt of speaking in front of 25 people because I was a stammerer. And now by Allah's grace, Alhamdulillah, I address large audiences and one of the largest audience was more than a million people. I believe it's only because of the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't think that I'm intelligent. I don't think I'm the best speaker. There are thousands of people in the world, Muslims, who have more knowledge than me. There are many who are more charismatic than me. I believe it's only Hazam in Fazli Rabbi. It is only because of the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His mercy, that whatever little bit I've achieved is because of His grace and mercy, alhamdulillah. There are uh, many articles uh, which were written about your relation with the Gambian president, Yahya Gama, and uh, uh, that uh, you were uh, you played a major role uh, when he came to announce uh, that Gambia is an Islamic state. And this Ramadan, um, music was banned, uh, um, singing was banned uh, throughout Ramadan, and it's uh, very uh, was surprising that the people accepted that. And uh, what's your nature, the nature of your relationship? relationship with the Gambian president and the uh, credibility of these articles? Alhamdulillah, in the year 2014, I got an invitation from the president of Gambia. And believe me, at that time, I did not know there is a country by the name of Gambia existing in the world. So I went on the map and I found out it's on the east coast of Africa, in between Senegal. And I said, the president invited me, so I accepted and I gave him a date that I'll come there in October 2014. And when I went there, he sent the foreign minister to pick me up from Senegal. When I landed on the airport of Gambia, mashallah, the cabinet was there, that received me. When I went out of the airport, I could see thousands of people standing on the road for kilometers. I was shocked. I said, I don't know about this country, and all of them saying, Ellen was silent, Dr. Zaki Naik, Ellen was silent. I was shocked. I said, which country is this? I didn't hear of it and everyone knows me here. Then I realized that Peace TV was very popular there. And when I met the president of Gambia, mashallah, Abdul Jam, Allah Abdul Jami, he said that previously the population of Gambia was 90% Muslims. After Peace TV, now it is more than 95% Muslim. And I found him to be a strong, strong Muslim. And in fact, I have been to many Muslim countries leaving aside the Gulf countries, the Middle East countries, where I find that at the time of Salah, everyone goes for Jama. But in the other Muslim countries, I've never seen when I was with him having a meeting, when it was time for Asar Salah, he got up and the full cabinet joined him for Salah in the mosque. I was shocked. Fine, he's a Muslim, but I've traveled and I've been the guest of many Muslim countries in the world, except for the Middle East. I've never seen anywhere that everyone is going for Salah. I was very much impressed. And I found that he had that passion. And I told him that he, why does he implement the Sharia? He said, inshallah, inshallah, you pray, one day it will happen. And in my talks, I always promoted that your president, Alhamdulillah, he's a good Muslim. And inshallah, he'll implement the Sharia. I encouraged him. And after I came back to Bombay, within about a span of about eight to 10 months, he declared Gambia as an Islamic Republic. And he changed the name from the Republic of Gambia
to the Islamic Republic of Gambia and was the first country in the whole of Africa to become an Islamic country. So Alhamdulillah, it is Allah gave me hidayah and Alhamdulillah through my speeches and through my relationship and that's what we do, that when we meet the heads of states, whatever as a dai, we can convey, we try and convey and get them to the Islam, Alhamdulillah. Western countries are worried and concerned about you. Britain, you were Britain, uh, banned from entering Britain. Uh, there were many accusations that you are terrorists and support uh, terrorism. What do you say about that? Yes, if you know the background, in the year 2009, I was approached by the head of the anti-terrorism department of UK by the name of Charles Farr. So he sent someone to me and he told me that, Dr. Zakir, you have a reach. You can reach those people who we cannot reach. Because our channel is very popular even in UK, the Peace TV, English. So he said, will you help us? So I said, I'm aware that there are some black ships in the Muslim community. I'm aware that the UK government has some misconception about Islam. I'm willing to help you under two conditions. Number one, that you should not ask me to do anything against Quran and the Sahih Hadith. And number two, I don't want your money. And it was a very positive meeting. Next year in 2010, there were elections and the Labour Party lost and the Conservative came. The moment the Conservative came to power, in less than three weeks, the Home Secretary Theresa May, she wanted to show to the Muslim that it's tough. She saw who's the most popular person and she banned me. I had a valid visa for five years. I had a valid visa and hardly one year was over. I was there in 2009, I gave lecture, and in 2010, I was going to give a series of lectures in Wembley Arena and in big auditoriums and big stadiums, Alhamdulillah. Publicity was done, and she prevents me from coming. And, and we did a case, we took the government to the court, and initially on the, on the lower side was from a higher side, when we went to, this, to the higher court, the Court of Appeal and Supreme Court, the judge said that, though my lawyer said that 99.99% you will win. But the judge says, we don't want to look into the merit of the case. And in the letter where they said, you are not allowed, what did she quote? She quoted a part of my lecture. And she said, in the lecture in UK, when you came before, you said, inverted commas, and I said that more than 3,000 people that were killed in the Twin Tower blast, I condemn it. More than 50 people killed in the London tube bomb blast, I condemn it. More than 180 people killed in the train serial bomb blast in Bombay, I condemn it. But I also condemn the thousands of innocent people killed in Afghanistan, Iraq and Palestine. So she said this is promoting terrorism. When I use the word Americans, I did not use the word innocent. When I use the word Britishers, I did not use innocent. But when I use the word people in Afghanistan, Iraq and Palestine, I went out of my way to say, I condemn the thousands of innocent people killed in Afghanistan, Iraq and Palestine. And she's saying, I'm, I'm not conducive for UK society. It's illogical. So when we went to the judge that what logic is this? He says, we don't want to look into the merit of the case. The Home Secretary has the right, whoever she wants to prevent, she can prevent. And after that, she has prevented many speakers. She even objected on Sheikh Abdurrahman Sudesh to come into UK. Later on, the Saudi government objected and they said, sorry, we did not know. So this new government that has come to power, the, uh, the conservative, it is more of a political move rather than, you know, they want to show that they're tough to the Muslims. My last question for you, in, in short, how do you look into the future of Islam and what's the responsibility of Muslims to spread Islam, uh, especially in the fact that many non-Muslims are eager, to, in short? According to me and according to the Quran, it is compulsory for every Muslim to convey the message of Islam to the non-Muslim. It is the duty that they should remove the misconception. And in short, the criteria to go to Jannah is given in Surah Al-Asr. 
chapter number 103, verse number 1 to 3, which says, well, us in the insala fikhus illa lezina amanu, that man is very in a state of loss except those who have faith, those who have righteous deed, those who invite people to truth and those who invite people to patience and perseverance. Dr. Zakir, uh, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, we'd like to thank our viewers as well. Thank you so much for being uh, with us. We have to have. Uh, we hope to have you again with us, uh, Dr. Zakir. Thank you so much.